Hey there everyone, in this video we are going to kind of be condensing the stuff that we've learned in the previous uh, videos for Unit 4 and kind of discussing uh, all of the, the key pieces of information. So this is what would normally consist of for our review. So this goes hand in hand with a worksheet that would be handed out in class. So first, let's take a look at a graph. We've got some questions to answer. Uh, just looking at the shape of this, I'm presuming that it's probably going to be a cubic. And then I'm just, I'm just going to make little notes to myself of any x-intercepts, y-intercepts, maxes, mins, whatever. Because those might come up later. All right, is the degree even or odd? Well, I'm noticing it goes down on one, one end, up on the other, so that means it's got to be odd. Is the leading coefficient positive or negative? Well, the right side end behavior goes up, so it's going to be positive. Intervals on which we are increasing. Well, it's increasing from negative infinity on the x-axis all the way up until negative 4. So from negative infinity to negative 4. And then again, right here from 0 on to forever. So from 0 to infinity. When is it decreasing? Well, that's just going to be this little downhill stretch right there. So between negative 4 and 0. Remember with these intervals, we always, always, always want to deal with the x values. Intervals on which this thing is constant, there is no flat line, so it is not constant. Yes, 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 once you get to calculus, you could argue it's, it's constant at exactly two points when x is exactly 4 and x is exactly 0. But for this class, we're talking intervals, so don't worry about it. How many turning points does this have? Well, turning points are when it switches from increasing to decreasing. And in doing so, it creates either a max or a min. I'm counting one, two of these. So two turning points. It's got a relative minimum, so a low point, of negative 8. And that happens at the x value of 0. So it's got a low point, a minimum, of negative 8 when my x value is 0. It's got a relative maximum, so a peak right here. The y value is 0, and that happens when x is negative 4. So it has a relative max of 0 when x is negative 4. Next, f of negative 2. So when x is negative 2, what's my function value? x is negative 2, my function value is negative 4. And we want to write this thing in factored form. So I'm going to use the x-intercepts to help me. I'm going to have x plus 4 and x minus 2 as my factors. But since x minus 4 or x plus 4 here, that was a bounce point, that means this has to have an even multiplicity. So I'll give it a squared. For all I know, maybe it was x plus 4 to the fourth power. But squared will keep it nice and easy. All right, next up. Sum and difference of cubes, factoring to solve. So, with these, this is when we want to recognize the cubed roots of numbers. So we have kind of our a and b values. So our a value is x, our b value is going to be, in this case, 2. Uh, you're going to want to watch the previous video if, uh, if you've not seen how to do sum or difference of cubes. This will factor down into the pattern a, b, and then a squared, ab, b squared. The way we figure out what operations go in between is all determined on this sign right here. So we start off with a minus. So if I follow the acronym of SOAP, this would be the same, opposite, always positive. So this is my factor pattern here. Now all I've got to do is plug and chug. So a is x, b is 2. So I've got x squared. 2x plus 4. When you do these, the first factor will almost universally, actually, no, it always will, will give you a clean, nice, easy, pretty number. So x equals 2. Huzzah. This chunk over here is normally going to give you a little bit of a headache. Not, not terrible. So we're either going to have to do quadratic formula or completing the square. If there's no coefficient and I've got an even b value, you best believe I'm going completing the square. 
So I have x squared plus 2x blank equals negative 4 blank. And we want to factor this out. So we fill in the blanks, take half of our b value and square it. So I've got x plus 1 quantity squared equals negative 3. From here, we'll square root each side. And I'll get x equals negative 1 plus or minus i rad 3. This gives me one, two, three answers total. We started off with a cubic, so three answers is to be expected. All right, next one. X to the third plus 27. No GCF here, so let's go straight into our A and B values. Cubed root of each term. My formula for factoring these is A then B, and then A squared, AB b squared. To figure out the operators, I'll use the SOAP acronym. Same, opposite, always positive. Now we plug and chug. So I've got x plus 3, and then x squared minus 3x plus 3 squared is 9. First factor is going to give you the clean, easy number. x equals negative 3. Huzzah. Yay. Second number is going to require a little work. I could do completing the square, but I don't want to deal with the odd number dividing it in half because then I get a fraction. Just not feeling it. So, quadratic formula it is. Opposite of b, so positive 3, plus or minus square root of b squared, so 9, minus 4ac. 4 times 9 times 1. So 4 times 9 times 1 is 36. All over 2a, well, this is just 2 times 1, so 2. Let's clean this up a bit. I've got 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 36 is negative 27. So i rad 27 all over 2. All right, that just about covers it. Uh, if you can do all the factoring problems and you know how to unpack the information from a graph, you should be more than fine for success on the quiz here. You know the drill. If there's any questions along the way, please let me know. As always, folks, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.